Hi, I'm Nikki. And I'm Hani, and this is our camper van, Finn. Today, we're gonna show you how we went from this to this. We'll cover how we installed our subfloor, our insulation, our sound deadener, and our vinyl flooring. So let's, so let's get, get to it. it. To start the build off, we made a stencil for our subfloor. To do this, we used cardboard boxes from packages we've gotten over the past couple of months. We used a Sharpie to trace around the edges of the wheel well and the gas tank. And then after we traced, we cut with scissors to get the right shape. There is one thing that we would have done differently for this is it would be to not be so perfect. As you can see in the video, the cardboard goes all the way straight up to the edge of the inside of the van. We're gonna add insulation later on and so what we had to do is cut the subfloor multiple times just because the insulation ended up taking extra room. So when you do this, if you're doing this to your van, don't be so perfect. You can leave an inch or two to spare. The next step was to cut the subfloor. So what we did is we took our three quarter inch plywood, laid them out in the driveway next to each other and discussed which way we wanted to cut them. We ended up cutting our subfloor longwise. Connie wanted to save some of the plywood that was left over for other parts of the van. Once we decided which way we wanted to cut the subfloor, all we did was lay the stencil on top of it and trace it with a Sharpie. We used a jigsaw to cut the subfloor. This made things pretty easy because there were a lot of turns. And as Hani went around cutting the subfloor, I followed her with a piece of sandpaper. After we cut the subfloor, we did a dry fit. One thing that sucked about the wood that we got from Home Depot was that it was bowed. After a lot of discussion, Hani and I decided that we weren't going to secure our subfloor to the floor of the van. Basically, some people online told us that, you know, all the furniture, the bed, etc. will be heavy enough to get the bow and the wood to flatten. Once the subfloor was cut, I took the pieces into the backyard to prime them with mold primer. So that concludes the subfloor part of this video. To give you a quick cost breakdown of materials, all we needed for the subfloor was two pieces of 4x8 3 quarter inch plywood for a total of $110 from Home Depot. We also used mold primer, however we had some left over from the last owners of the house, so that was free. The first step to prepping the floor is to make sure that the floor is flat and also to fill all the holes so water can't get in. Hani inspected the van. She also went through with the multi-tool and cut anything that's sticking out of the floor. Then we did a quick sweep. I was also particularly grossed out at all the grit and grime and dirt inside these little holes here. So I went through and I cleaned these out with simple green and a rag. Now that the van's all clean, the next step is to fill all the holes. When we bought the van, it was already gutted, but it did have two smaller pieces of plywood screwed to the floor from the previous owner. He drilled the subfloor directly into the van floor, which left a few holes. First, what we did was sanded down any rust that we could find, and we used Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. Here is the largest hole that we had to fill. What we decided to use to fill this hole was fiberglass cloth and resin. In order to prep for the resin, we first sanded around the hole. This is to remove any paint, which will allow the resin to stick better to the surface. After sanding, I gave it a click clean. Then Hani took some fiberglass cloth and cut it to size. Once the resin is mixed, you paint some around the hole. Then you layer on your fiberglass cloth and coat that with the resin as well. You repeat those steps three times until it's thick enough, and then you give it some time to cure. Of everything we did in build one, I think that this was the most intimidating. I watched a ton of videos on how to use fiberglass resin to either repair car frames um, or use it to fill holes in boats. All of the other holes in the van floor were a lot smaller. So what we used on those was this product called Steel Stick. It comes in a stick and it feels a lot like clay. What you do is you mold them together and there'll be a chemical reaction which will start to harden them. Once you have it mixed, you place it over the hole and just push it in and try to get a good seal on it. And that concludes the subfloor prep part of this video. Here's a cost breakdown of all the materials we used to prep the van floor and fill all the holes. Steel brush attachment, $12. Rust-Oleum rust reformer, $12. Steel stick, $6. Fiberglass cloth, $5. Fiberglass resin, $21. For a total of $44. 
In this next section, we'll cover how we used sound deadener in the van and also what types of insulation we used and where. We used Thermotech Coolant on the floor of the van because it's supposed to double as a sound deadener and some insulation. Before we installed the Thermotech, first we needed to cut it so it would fit around the gas tank. Hani used the subfloor as a stencil and traced the outline of it before we cut it. Once the Thermotech was cut, we were ready to install it. This was pretty easy. One thing to note when doing this is to be careful and wear gloves because it is made out of aluminum and the edges can be sharp. For the sides, we used a product called Silas. It's very similar to the Thermotech, except it's a lot thinner and cheaper. We used paper to cut stencils for each compartment on the side of the van. And here's what it looks like with most of our sound bender installed. After we installed our sound deadener, we moved on to insulation. To start, Hani covered both of the wheel wells in Reflectix. She used aluminum tape to secure them. Next, we created stencils for the foam board insulation. We used this foam board insulation both on the sides and on the ceiling of the van. To cut the foam board, we used a jigsaw. This was one of the more messy parts of the project. There was foam everywhere. And to install the insulation on the sides of the van, we used foam first. We ended up not having enough of this foam and I don't think it was the right type to begin with. So we ended up just taping in the foam board. If we did this again, we would buy the correct foam. Here's what it looked like after we installed the foam insulation. Here's a breakdown of what the sound deadening and insulation materials cost. Two sheets of Coolit sound deadening was $144. One pack of Silas sound deadening was $66. The sound deadening roller was $9. Two rolls of Reflectix was $40. Aluminum tape times seven, $38. The insulation foam board was $13. And the reflective foam insulation we used in the second part of the build was $90. After we finished installing the foam insulation, we moved on to the vinyl flooring. Again, we used the subfloor to stencil out the far left side of the van, basically to get around the wheel well and the gas tank. And we used a jigsaw to cut the vinyl flooring so that it would fit. Instead of buying a kit with the special tools, Hani used a wood block and a hammer to connect the pieces. Full transparency, a couple months after this, we removed all the vinyl flooring and reinstalled it a different way. As a tip, if we were to do this again, we would consider where the bed and our different cabinets are gonna go and then not worry about putting a floor there. And here's a final look at the van after we installed the vinyl flooring. Here's a final breakdown of what we spent for this build. $110 on the subfloor, $56 on prepping the floor and filling the holes, and $400 on the insulation and sound deadener for a total of $566. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. We're also interested to know if you have any questions or if you did your build differently. All the materials that were used in this build are linked down below. 